going to talk about fused glass today. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of um, about cutting glass um, and about colouring glass um, and about putting glass into uh, the kiln to fuse it. Um, and also a little bit about polishing the edges of glass. Um, just a very, very basic beginner's introduction. Glass cutter, that's that, really important. Got a little bit of oil in the top to make it um, easy to use. Um, and all you do is literally take a piece of glass and scribe down it like that. It makes that nice noise. And when you've done that, you can either break it with your fingers, which is simple when you get used to it, very easy. Or, particularly for a thicker piece of glass, you might use, need to use a pair of uh, glass pliers, which is that little thing there, which will just literally help you to cut it. This is an A3 cutting mat on which you can cut your glass. It makes it very simple because it's, it's actually um, set out in a grid form. So you can use a, a ruler or some straight edge and then you can cut your glass quite easily by scribing down it. Easily broken. And you will do a little a simple square using the same the same uh, idea. There are lots of different glass powders that you can use and they come in different, lots of different colours. There's also um, glass powder that comes in a, a tube like this and you can write with it and draw with it which is very useful. If you want to, um, to draw something on a piece of glass you could use one of these um, felt tip pens, this is a sharpie, um, and you can draw all sorts of shapes on it and just let it dry for a few seconds and turn it upside down. And you can follow those lines that you've drawn, they can be as intricate as you like. So you need a fairly steady hand, but it's not a difficult thing to do. And once the ink, the glass ink starts running, um, it's quite easy to control. So it just gives you a little idea of how how that works. And this colour is black and there's a whole range of different colours. This is a sample of the, um, the glass powder before it's made into a um, glass uh, paintable solution. Uh, that's the glass powder. Mixed with water it becomes quite thick, like globby, and then to paint it, it's very, very simple. You can paint it either thickly or thinly onto the glass, and that will dry in about um, 10 minutes. Um, and it will dry to a powder, but it does actually stick to the glass, but it doesn't impregnate the glass. It just, you can easily wipe it off if you want to and start again. This, this is a, a sample of the kiln matting, which can be used several times over um, and compresses slightly. You can wet it if you want to. You can bend it and that is where um, I made these little grooves in this sample piece. As you can see the kiln matting fits in there and that would, that would go flat down onto the kiln bed to produce this um, slightly uh, raised effect on the outside. This is another sample of, of the same sort of thing which has been, the, the glass has been painted in the way that I've just described and a bigger piece of kiln matting put inside which then allows the glass to slump over and then you get a raised part on the, on the surface. This piece of equipment here is a circle cutter. It's very, very useful for making rounds because it's not an easy thing to do without one of these. You fasten the piece, you check that it will go right the way round and then by applying a little bit of pressure on the you hear that nice noise as it goes round. Tells you that it's cut in the glass. And here, presto, there we are. A little piece of round.
these offcuts can be used for other things. They're quite, I don't want to throw any of that away. And hopefully that should make it quite easy to break the pieces off. And using pliers is probably a better idea. I always use the, the glass um, polishing machine just to do just to finish off the edges. So this is where the glass polishing machine comes into its own. And within a few minutes you've got a completely round and beautiful piece of glass ready to uh, to go fusing. Okay, so this is the Neverthermal kiln, which is now at 683 degrees on its way up to about 830. And this is the peephole to have a look and see how things are cooking inside. I don't know whether you'll see a lot, but um, you can probably see some of the some of the pieces. We'll just open the kiln again. It's very hot, so we'll just have a quick look inside. There we go. That shows pieces being cooked at the moment. They haven't. They haven't. Uh, these haven't melted yet, so we've got a little bit further, another 150 degrees to go. 